Hamilton Bay. Quiet now, but not for long. The hydroplanes are coming. Greatest show on water is the Export A Hydroplane Series on TSN. Today, from beautiful Bayfront Park in Hamilton, Ontario, TSN presents the Greater Hamilton Aquafest. Hello again, everyone. Vic Crowder along with Boat Racing Hall of Famer Mark Rothbell. And welcome to Aquafest, a 10 day celebration of Hamilton's waterfront. It truly is a family oriented party that seems to get bigger every year. Can you make a balloon like Mark? And on the final weekend comes the main event. The hydroplane races presented by Export A and Lakeport Breweries. Mark? Vic, so far this season, we've had three winners in three different races. Claude Bergeron, Jimmy King, and Guy Verdun, they've all made it to the podium. But the preseason favorite, Jean Thierry, has yet to win. Mechanical problems have put him on the sideline in every final. So he's looking to Hamilton to turn around his season. And he's got some stiff competition. But before we get to the Grand Prix showdown, let's first watch some 2.5 liter racing. All right, Mark, and for those new to our sport, let's explain these 2.5 liter class. Well, the 2.5s, they're powered by Cobra engines, four cylinders. They can reach a maximum speed of about 100, 105 miles an hour. The boats are about 13, 14 feet long, and this guy's hot. This guy's on fire, Gino Metivier. Metivier, on the first start, finds his 2.5 liter explode in flames, and then he takes the plunge into Burlington Bay. And there's the Canadian Boating Federation's rescue craft. They've put out the flames so Gino can race again. Unfortunately, it won't be today as he gets the tow back to the dock. This 2.5 liter race, it is four laps around a circuit that is one and a quarter miles in distance. So they'll do five miles total as the field comes to the starting line and you have to hit it at zero and here they come, Mark. And here we go. Tom Utman has taken off into the early lead. Mike Monahan's on the very inside. He's won the last two races. Valley Field, Bill Marine, they come around the corner. Oh, they're tight. It's Utman, number 16, the yellow boat leading ahead of the number 7, Martin Morale Rochelle, the purple boat closest to the camera. Unfortunately, there is Monaghan. Boy, has he zipped along the inside. He's coming around the corner right now. Utman's already to the back. Mike Monaghan in the number 60, Techno Marine from Cable, Ontario, has stretched it out now with Utman following. And then Mike Monaghan is known for his quick starts. He's, oh boy, is he loose? Oh, what's one's doing? going down, fighting for second place. They see Monahan. Monahan obviously gets in trouble once in a while. He pushes very hard. Two side by side going through the corner. It's tight. Paul Montana to the number 27 Coyote. Two has picked up second place. But up ahead, it's Monahan getting a little loose. And now, as they come through the turn, after one lap, it's Monahan, Mathieu, and Hutman. Notice how close those boats were picking the car. These boats get very close, but the air is disturbed when they get that close together, and boats can get very, very wild. Now Monahan seems to have settled down a little bit as we look back for second and third. There it is, Jean-Paul Martin Mathieu. Looking back now for the third place boat, that'll be Tom Hutman. But now the boats seem to have steady. What would have caused him to get so loose? Well, he obviously maybe hit a pocket of air or a little roller against the wind or something like that. Right now, though, Matu is really charging. He's coming on a lot stronger than he has in past races. He's not that far behind Monaghan. Trying to find maybe a little bit of quieter water as we look back towards Tom Hutman. We've completed a couple laps. There's your leader, the number 60, Mike Monaghan, followed by Matu in the number 27, and then Hutman in the number 16. Nick, the water can get very wild here in Hamilton. It's a short course. There's not a lot of entry into the start-finish line. So these guys, when they're rolling around, getting their positions ready to go, they drum up the water. The swells get pretty big, and that never goes away. The water doesn't dissipate. On ahead, it is number 60 again, getting a little loose now as we look back to the number 27 of Paul Montan Mathieu. But they do have those adjustable wings up front, so what are they trying to do with those? Well, when the water's rough, they want to have the bow fairly high. They don't want to be stuffing the boat into the water, because if they hit a roller and the bow's not high enough, it'll submarine. And see, now those swings on Monaghan seem to almost be flat. He's carrying the bow, though. He's carrying it above the water's surface. He does not want to slam the front of the boat into the water. 
Second place continues to belong to Paul Montemathieu. We've completed three of the four laps here in Hamilton. It's Monaghan leading. There's the third place boat, Tom Upman, in that yellow number 16 Stalker 3 out of Rockville, Ontario. You know, obviously, Monaghan has done some homework here. He was playing around with propellers this weekend. He made some wrong choices and some qualifiers, and now he's got a different prop on, and I think it's, it's working for him, man. Open cockpit, but we've seen in previous races it doesn't bother Monaghan. In fact, I don't know, maybe as a driver you like to feel the air whistling past your ears. Well, you can draw the analogy to wearing hockey helmets. If you were a hockey player in the old days, you didn't wear a helmet, you didn't feel comfortable with it. These drivers have grown up with enclosed canopy, the younger guys, but Mike Monaghan, he grew up without one. He's coming now right towards the checkered flag. Oh, and he's got it, one of the older guys. And it also allows you to put your hand up and say we're a winner. So Mike Monaghan in the number 60 Tech Marine picks up the win here in Hamilton. Paul Montamathieu wearing number 27 is second. Tom Huttman in the 16 Stalker 3 is third. Congratulations to Mike Monaghan from Cayman, Ontario. After four races, look at how Monaghan has dominated 2.5 liter. TSN's coverage of the Hamilton Aqua Fest is brought to you by Export A. By the Industrial Tool Division of Stanley Proto. And by Vitek. Clearly the best protection in sight. We've only just begun here in Hamilton. It's the Export A Hydroplane Series. Here on TSN from Hamilton. Welcome back to Hamilton Harbor on Burlington Bay. TSN's coverage of the Export A Hydroplane Series. The five liter hydroplanes heading out now. Let's take a look at the field and we'll start with the CE 400. This is the Saint Vincent. This is Francois Campo for Valley Field. Out of Brockville, Ontario comes CE 141, Chris McCrady. William Bellhauer, last minute from Ogdensburg, New York. And out of Quebec, it's the Toyota boat, driven by Serge Bois. This man's boat is called Phase One. From Waterloo, New York, Jeff Linkner. Last year's 2.5 champion, Patrick Howard, driving CE5, the iTech boat. From Grand Island, New York, senseless, Joseph Less. The reigning 5-liter champion, Eric LaBelle, driving Do It. Can he do it? We'll see. Todd Bolter, smooth move seven from Belleville, Ontario. And in CE 104, Auto Parts Plus from Valley Field, Quebec, Norm Shannon. So there's your field as they now make their way around the final boy. They'll come to the starting line. Four laps, 1.25, total of five miles. And watch for Haworth and LaBelle. Take a look at that red boat. It's Patrick Howard driving the iTech boat. In the inside, in the white boat, that's Eric LaBelle, the reigning five-liter champion. They're going at it head-to-head. Currently in third place is Joseph Less, son of Grand Island, New York, in his senseless boat. But this is the battle we've expected all season long. On the inside, Eric LaBelle. Outside, Patrick Haworth. And remember, LaBelle won the last race in Ville Marie. Haworth there, he had his problems and he didn't get to race. That's right, Then He lost his canard wing in Ville Marie. It came off the boat and lay on the course. He got disqualified, couldn't race again. So that shut him out of that race. But right now, he won wants to win in Hamilton, he has to gain some points here. And coming up and lost in the spray, the second place boat, Eric LaBelle. We've completed one here as we ride along now with your leader. This is Patrick Colbert. Take a look at this, Nick. Right now, he's more or less just sliding around through the corner. He's keeping his arms up, his revs up high. He wants to keep the boat floating very loose. He's taking the corner rip fairly wide, keeping Eric LaBelle to the outside. He doesn't want to let anybody on the inside. Notice he's fairly far away from the pin. He's coming down, going into the straightaway, and once again, he hooks up for the turn. And you can see the way that canard wing gets bounced around. We go now, see the leader coming through the turn one more time, and as we saw in the 2.5s, they seem to get a little looser going in the, on the back stretch. Now they seem to settle down as they go in the other direction, back in towards the city of Hamilton. One way you're going down when the other way you're going up when. So you have to adjust for that, and you do that with the wing. 
Your leader is Patrick Haworth. We've completed two laps here of this five-liter class. Eric Lavelle in his boat do it, currently running second. Now look at the difference of that wing. That wing is now flat as compared to before. It was biting and putting the nose of the boat into the water. So what's the wing doing now? I think it looks like he's trying to stabilize the boat. I noticed going down the back chute, he had the wing down. This time he's got the wing left. Maybe he's just trying to find the perfect trim setting. Again, you can see now the city of Hamilton in the background, and this is down the front stretch towards the start-finish line as we come up now on the end of the third lap, and there is your leader, Patrick Colworth, in his boat, high-tech out of Valley Field, Quebec. Patrick's commanding the race right now. Eric LaBelle and Dewitt is chasing him, but he doesn't seem to be gaining on him. He though continues to slide a lot, and I'll tell you what, he, the, the force he puts on that right response, and all oh, problems for the number 400, the sans façon, Francois Campeau from Valley Field. I don't know what's happened to him. It looks like he spun out, maybe he missed a buoy. He has to go back and pick it up. Anyway, he's back on track. But there we have Patrick Howard, the leader. But that, that one fin on the left sponsor that cuts in and sort of helps you cut the torch, if that leaves the water, how much more difficult are the turns to make? If the, if the fin leaves the water, it's okay. It's gonna drop back down. Actually, the one sponsor on the right side is heavier, wider, and has more flotation than the left side. It keeps the boat level. Patrick Hallworth picks up the win here in Hamilton. Eric LaBelle in Do It just fails to do it, finishing second. Norman Shannon from Valley Field in his Auto Parts Plus finishes third. Patrick, good job out there. It must have been rough. Oh, it was un it's unexplainable how rough it is out there. The head is banging left, right, left, right, and uh, it's getting dizzy out there, but uh, the iTech uh, racing team really worked hard this weekend to adjust the boat uh, to perfection. The points chase is very close between you and Eric right now. Oh, yes, it is, and, uh, you know, this five-liter class, I said all along, it's a hot class, and uh, it's fun out there. So Patrick Hallworth regains the lead with his win by two over Eric LaBelle, Jeff Linkner holding on to third place. Still lots more to come from Hamilton here on TSN. Now, how many of you remember these? These are the Amphicars, half boat, half car. You drive it up on the shore, and you just drive it on down the 401. I think you need one on the front to uh, get the bow out a little bit. <laughs> Can Am time. Number 12, John McCreeth from Carrying Place. In the Toronto Mazda boat, it's at night out of Mississauga. David Kearsbilt drives the Outlaw from Ontario, New York. And from Curtis, Ontario, it's Brad Steffen in number 19. Out of Staten Island, the boat is called Already Gone, it's Eric Tolles. And here's another Eric, Eric Hahn out of Webster, New York, driving the Rainmaker, the defending Export A champion. Dominique Cornoyer from saint anne sorel Quebec in Dompsey. And here's Dale Hernandez Jr. from Minnesota, driving Conquistador's Revival. Another boat out of saint anne sorel Miss Maud, René Beauchemin. The 95 Canadian champion, Christian Bernard, driving Summer's Dream. Here they come, around the final boy, heading for the start-finish line. Again, the key is to hit the line at zero. And it's going to be tight. A couple of boats right now have already jumped, and you can hear the you can hear the gun go, and they were already by the line. Vic, that's a great point, but these guys couldn't hear the gun go off. These guys are racing for it right now. They don't know they've been disqualified. So, in fact, we don't know how many boats have been disqualified here. So right now, it looks like McCreeth, Eric Hahn, these guys are going for the front. Dominic Cornoyer, Christian Barnard, the two expected uh, gun jumpers as Eric Kahn now moves inside of Cornoyer and absolutely leaves him in a rooster tail of water. Eric Kahn has been basically undefeated in the past two seasons. This guy is running hot. He has so much horsepower, around a thousand, maybe more, but this guy is fast. He's looking over his shoulder then. Absolutely, looking over his shoulder at everybody he has left behind. Now the difference between these boats, these are not hydroplanes, these are flat bottoms and they are really unlimited. As you look back now at the, the battle, the 690 is Dale Hernandez out of Minnesota. Very colorful out there, you can't miss him. These boats, notice how close they get in the corners? They're like stock cars, they like to bump once in a while, it gets pretty wild. But again,
again, the difference in driving one of these as compared to the 2.5 and the 5 liters? Totally different driving style altogether. These guys oh, want to run rough look at, look at Hernandez trying the outside of Eric Kahn, but then had to back out of it. Once again, take a look at that rough water. You heard Patrick Howard say how hard it was, how his helmet was bashing around. These guys are very, very loose right now. Now, this is at night. His boat, night life for Mississauga. Let's ride along. Notice that, Nick? That was the RPM skyrocketing. It soars every time the prop breaks loose from the water. So they have to back out of it or they can damage their engine. This down the back straight. Now, watch as he goes into turn three. It's a left-hander, but he sets up the left-hander by turning the boat to the right. Well, it's basically the goal of every racing driver to try and make his vehicle or boat as this is get around like it's on rails. Right now, he's fighting it a little bit. He's fighting the water. The boat jumps out of the water. The tail slides. The bow hooks in. You want him to go around as straight as possible. Eric Hahn looking over his shoulder, and who he sees, of course, is Hernandez out of Minnesota in Conquistador's revival. And it's a bit of a revival for Hernandez as he's closing on Eric Hahn. It certainly is. This is definitely Hernandez's best race ever. Eric Hahn going into turn one, leading by, oh, that much now over Hernandez. Cornboy running in third, Barnard running in fourth, and, of course, go back to that start. Did both Barnard and Cornway jump? We'll find out. But look at this, Mark. It's as if it's as if Han has something in reserve. He knows the challenge is there. He puts the pedal down, and then the challenge is over. Eric Han now pulling away as he continues his domination of Can-Am. Oh. And look at Cornway now getting by Hernandez. It looks like Hernandez has some problems. All in vain. Cornway has been disqualified. It's just been announced that leaves Hernandez in second place. He's going to be happy today. Absolutely no problem. Now you can look over your shoulder, Eric, and wave goodbye to everybody else. Eric Pond makes it look so easy. Cornway will finish second, but will he? Because no, he's been disqualified, and you bet you. Do you think Hernandez knows it? Yes, Hernandez will pick up second. Boschman third as both. Cornway and Bernard have been disqualified. It has been his series for the last couple of years. Absolutely unbeatable. Look at Eric Hahn by 200 points now over John McCree. And we're only still early this year. Coming up, it's the big boys. It's the Grand Prix votes, the x A Hydroplane series from Hamilton on TSN. The boat of Jimmy King getting ready for his Grand Prix event. You know, so much happens away from the water for these boats. Here's Mark. In a weekend of fighter plane racing, a Grand Prix boat competes in three three-lap qualifiers and a four-lap final. Now, this may not seem like a whole lot of time on the water, but for the pit crew, it makes for a very busy schedule. The moment a boat finishes its heat, crew members rush to get it back on its trailer. At the pier, lifting straps are carefully attached, and the boat gets craned from the water. Every inch of the boat gets quickly inspected for possible damage. At 160 miles an hour, water pressure has a way of opening seams and hairline stress cracks. Next, all cables, pulleys, turnbuckles, and other steering hardware is checked. Components like these require constant adjustments due to the extreme forces placed upon them in the turns. Strong metals like 15.5 pH stainless steel and 70.75 T6 aluminum are used in manufacturing steering rudders and skid fins. But they sometimes bend if a boat spins or hits an underwater object. If any of these were to break, a driver would likely lose control. Similarly, propellers are carefully examined for any marks, cracks, or damage. A Grand Prix boat has many safety features that, in order to do their job, must be maintained. Entry and exit capsule doors are inspected to ensure a tight fit, and onboard oxygen tanks are replaced. Mirrors vibrate constantly and must be adjusted after every heat. Vibration can also cause every nut and bolt throughout the boat to loosen off, so the crew uses a sharp eye and good tools to ensure everything is fastened down. Tuning temperamental Grand Prix motors is no easy job. Skilled mechanics concentrate on doing their jobs not only right, but fast. There's little time between heats, and there's no telling what problems they will find. All systems require the once over, and hopefully only minor adjustments need to be made on race day. If onboard computers are used, the crew chief will analyze the information and make changes where necessary. 
Once the batteries are charged, the boat is refueled with methanol and the cowlings are put back into place. A quick polish never hurts either, and the boat is again lifted off its trailer and ready for action in the next heat. Obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into preparing a Grand Prix boat every time it takes to the water, and that's if everything runs smoothly. If it doesn't, well, that's another story. You know, it's true what they say, racing is like icebergs, you only see 10% of it. Everything else, though, 90% you rarely see. He won in Valley Field, Colbert's on the Gator 34, and this man, Guy Verdun, won in Ville Marie. Last year's X4 A Series winner, driving the pleasure seeker Jimmy King out of Richmond, Michigan. Jean Thioré, the legend, hasn't done very well so far this year. 772, driven by Réjean Blochette, Enterprise 2 from Quebec. Out of Grand Island, New York, lane automotive, Todd Roche. And the number 38 boat, driven by Scott Crawfield, Finney Finish, out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And Express from Lac Saint-Charles, Quebec, Alain Blachette. And we have problems for the winner in Valley Field. Clobert on the Gator is out. He was having problems this week with oil pressure. He might have thrown a rod. Here we have the start. And again, have we got a jump here? It looks like we do. It looks like we do. Four boats. Count the four boats appear to have jumped the start. Crawfield, Verdun, with Jean Blachette, Alain Blachette are way over. So again, remember what happened in the can -Ams. We had the boats jump. Will they be disqualified, those four, as we ride along now with Jean Thierry and all he can see is the white water of Jimmy King. Jimmy is really hauling the mail right now. Take, oh, there's something wrong here with Jean Thierry's boat. He is heading toward the inside, but awful fast. There is something very wrong here. It looks almost like a steering problem of sorts. Jean Thierry he is dead in the water, and the problems oh. continue for the Lotto Super 7. Vic, he almost hit that patrol boat. There must have been a steering problem. He was experiencing some difficulties with the mechanics of the rudder before something might have happened. But Jimmy King trying to make amends for the disappointment of missing Phil Marie after the problems of Valley Field, and he's running away with it here in Hamilton. Vic, obviously, all that preparation time between the heats has paid off for Jimmy because he is really running strong. Remember, he's running the Chrysler Hemi, the only Chrysler in the series. The others are running Chevy, 500, 510 cubic inches, 503 in the Hemi. And the problem for him has been to find the parts after Valley Field trying to rebuild the motor. He just wasn't able to do it. But he obviously has the parts today as we look back to second place both at his Guy Verdun from saint Timothy, Quebec, and the number 38 that is Scott Crockfield running in third, but again, you have to wonder, those two are the two of the four that jumped, and will they be in those positions when it's all over? Again, they don't know. Unfortunately, radios aren't used in Grand Prix. They have problems with the magnetos with interference, and they can't seem to make them work right. These guys don't know they're been disqualified. There's Jimmy King. He knows he's legal. I tell you what, though, when you look at all the classes we've seen so far, these are the quietest of the boats on the water. You don't see a lot of flipping and flopping from these guys, do you? Quietest maybe in terms of flipping and flopping, but they are loud. These are probably the loudest automotive engines in the world. That Guy Verdun boat, 101, Abash Chennai. He won in Ville Marie. Trying to win it here, but even if he did, we question whether he'd be given the win. Jimmy King, the defending champion, looking very good now. As he picks up the win here in Hamilton, never challenged. And after they sort out the penalties, it's King in first. Todd Roche finishing second. Ever picks up third. Here's Mark. Jimmy, you set a blistering pace out there. Yeah, we, uh, with uh, the way the Lotto Quebec and Jean Theorette runs, uh, Roger Mayhem had to turn up the wick, and it was my job to use it, so he gave it to me. We made it go. Jimmy King now leading by 23 points over Guy Verdun in the championship points battle, and you still don't see Jean Theoré. TSN's coverage of the Hamilton Oxford has been brought to you by iTech, clearly the best protection in sight and by the Industrial Tool Division of Stanley Proto. And by Export A. Just a reminder, our coverage of the Export A Hydroplane Series continues from Cocan, New Brunswick with the Cocan International Regatta, September 14th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, here on TSN. Now on behalf of Mark Rothbell and our entire crew, I'm McGregor. Thanks for joining us. The very best.
in hydroplane racing is right here. Jimmy King is the king on TSN.